At the risk of being too simplistic, the main difference between the Eastern Orthodox and the Eastern Catholic Churches is the issue of accepting papal authority. While most of the Eastern Catholic Churches are governed by their Synod of Bishops, they are still in union with the Holy Father. The Orthodox Churches only accept the authority of their own bishops. The difference may be due more to politics, culture, and language than to theology. Hopefully, in the years to come, there will be union between the Orthodox and the Catholic Churches once again. The Second Vatican Council, by inviting the presence of the Eastern Catholic bishops, demonstrated a change in Roman Catholic thinking regarding all the Eastern Churches, Orthodox and Catholic alike. The document entitled, The Decree on the Eastern Churches, stated that those churches are distinguished by their venerable antiquity. It is clearly evident that the tradition has come from the Fathers and is part of divinely revealed, undivided heritage of the Universal Church. Furthermore, the Council recognized the equality of the Eastern Churches with the Roman when it declared, Therefore, these churches are of equal rank, so that none of them is superior to the others. They have the same rights and obligations, even with regards to preaching the gospel in the whole world. The Council went further to say that it is of supreme importance to understand, venerate, preserve, and foster the exceedingly rich liturgical and spiritual heritage of the Eastern Churches in order to preserve the fullness of Christian tradition, and that their entire heritage belongs to the full Catholic and apostolic character of the Church. In other words, the entire Church is not only Western, but also Eastern. Pope John Paul II expressed that the variety within the Brotherhood of the Church shows how all people, cultures, are called to be organically united in the Holy Spirit through the same faith, the same sacraments, and the same government. There is no doubt that the entire worldwide church is enormously indebted to the Eastern churches. Not only did Christianity begin in the East, but the major theological principles were defined by the first seven church councils which met in the East. The Gospels and most of the epistles were written in the Eastern lands. Many prayers such as the Creed, the Holy Holy, the Lamb of God, and the Gloria have their origin in the Eastern Churches. There have been over 16 popes who were Eastern. Many of the early missionaries of the West, like Irenaeus of Lyons and Theophilus of England, were likewise Eastern. And to this day, renewed inspiration is coming from all of those ancient and apostolic churches. The Catholic Church's Council, which met at the Vatican in the early 1960s, drew inspiration for its liturgical renewal from them. Let us remember, however, that the richness of those churches, which have the roots in the land of in which Christ lived, died, and resurrected, is the legacy of all Christians. It is hoped that the words of ecumenical patriarch Demetrius I on his recent visit to the United States may come true, that all Christians of the East and of the West may be together at a common table, drinking from a common cup. There is but one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Obviously, a person can only get a limited view of the Eastern Churches through a video of this length. A person can only experience Eastern worship by attending the nearest Eastern Catholic or Orthodox Church. We invite you to experience the richness of worship of the often little known Eastern Churches. <laughs>